Hey everyone, it's Jim from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today, in tube lab number 8, we're going to roll the 12AU7. The 12AU7, or ECC82, as it is called in Europe, was developed by RCA in 1946 and is a miniature dual triode 9 pin. So two tubes inside one glass envelope. You can see the two plates here as I rotate it. Cool, eh? It has an MU, or gain of 17, on old data sheets. It was called a medium gain tube, but compared to the 12AX7 with a gain of 100, it looks more like a low gain tube. So how do I know all this cool information? Well, I don't. But all you have to do is download the 12AU7 data sheet, and you will too. And that suggests a future episode, Reading Tube Data Sheets for Beginners, or How to Go to Sleep on YouTube in 5 Seconds. And yes, there are many, many types and near equivalents and variants of the 12AU7, including the MilSpec 5814A, and the Jan 6189, and the close equivalent Studio Grade E80CC. So up first, let's take a look at my number 104, the GE 12AU7 gray T-plate version. So there you can see the bump in the middle, so I would call that a T-plate. I use this to identify tubes in the inventory. I looked at the shape of the plate, color of the plate, size of the plate, and the slots, how big they are and where they're located. These are labeled Baldwin Oregon, so that makes them an organ select grade tube. And the reason for this is tube organs use a large number of 12AU7s and required quiet tubes. This tube has very nice base, good mid-range, and a crisp high end, nice definition and dynamics, medium level microphonics. Overall, a nice tube and affordable. Next is another GE, my number 117. It's a gray flat plate. Let's get it up here so you can see the difference. Just a flat plate. I would identify this by the number of ribs. It's got one, two, three ribs. So how does that sound? It has nice space, a rich full mid-range, and a nice detailed high end with medium microphonics. Another nice affordable GE 12AU7. In fact, I like these so much I didn't want to move on to the next tube, which is my number 108. RCA Clear Top. Much loved by bottlehead owners, and we should take a quick look at this plate. It's hard to see because I've got a label over it, but it is a flat plate with three ribs. And the reason why it has a clear top is because the getter and the chrome is on the side. So this is a side getter, a single side getter. And you can see the chrome here around. There can be bottom getters as well. So there can be double or single top getters. There can be side getters, double side getters, single bottom getters, double bottom getters. And they help identify a tube. Um, so this tube is much loved by bottle head owners. How does it sound? Well, the bass was just okay, but it had a rich, detailed mid-range and a nice top end with good detail. A nice tube, but not my favorite. Remember, every tube sounds different in every system. Every tube sounds different in every system. And good tubes should sound good in most systems, but bad tubes 
will be bad wherever you plug them in. Next is my number 105 Sylvania Jan 6189W Joint Army Navy 6189 makes this a mil spec tube or a military variation on the 12AU7 and we're going to do together with that we're going to do my number 113 Sylvania Jan 84 sorry 5814A and you might see that we've got a Phillips here on let's get this a little closer on our identification label and Phillips which was a was a huge tube manufacturer and electronics manufacturer in Europe they bought out um, Sylvania which was also a huge tube manufacturer in the US they bought them out in the early 80s to get their hands on US military contracts which were very lucrative though I'm not sure how long the, the money kept rolling in because by the early 80s people were moving heavily away from tubes um, so outwardly these plates look identical they're a bumped T plate with a slot for a reinforcing rod on each side some very narrow slots the plates are actually reversed on these tubes but essentially out, outwardly they look very close they've got double micas on top they're both mil spec tubes um, and they look very much like they're from the same era as well so I'm going to call these either close tubes close close relations to each other very close relations or basically a, an identical tube um, and the listening tests um, back that up in fact how so so how do these sound well they had nice bass a very nice mid-range with good detail which extends to a nice detailed top end overall a more refined version of the GE flat gray plate medium microphonics so I'm gonna say good performance for the money a more expensive tube but like most things in life you get what you pay for the last vintage tube is branded Hammond we've already talked about Hammond organs and the only other things on this tube our manufacturing code which doesn't mean anything to us sorry I should call this a product code it's not it doesn't have any of the signature um, identifiers that that my code book picks up so this is probably just a stock code maybe even a Hammond stock code and so it says Hammond it says 12AU7A and it says Great Britain okay now pay attention And everyone should say this out loud, what we're thinking inside. Yes, maybe a rebranded Mullard with no factory code, which happens. Maybe it happened because Mullard was making 10,000 tubes for Hammond. They're all going to be identical. Maybe there was no point in putting an etch code on. Maybe they're just trying to save some money and make them quickly. So how do we verify that we've got a Mullard? One way is to go to a known Mullard and just compare them. I don't happen to have a 12AU7 Mullard, but I do have a 12AX7 Mullard. And one of the things that you should watch out for, let's see if we can get it up close so you can see it, is on the side of the plate. You see that round hole? It's fairly large, even for a small signal tube. That is a good indicator that it might be a Mullard. Other manufacturers use those holes, but they're actually quite infrequent. And on small signal tubes, Mullard used them a lot. So there's a good hint. The plate structure of the 12A7 is very similar to a Mullard 12AX7. So we now know that the tube looks a lot like a Mullard. It's got some key indicators. This was our first clue, Great Writ. 
Great Britain should always be a wake-up call. So how do we do and how do we explore this further? Well, there's two more tests we can do. And the first one is to light this tube up and watch for the famous Mullard flash. And yes, it flashed big time. Okay, we're almost there. So the last is a listening test. How does this tube sound? Well, in brief, so good it hurt. The bass is forward and very detailed. Mid-range isn't as lush as the G's or Sylvania's, but it's more accurate and it's detailed. Top end is nice, crisp, and very detailed. And unlike most mullards, which are medium to high microphonic, this one is low microphonic. So I'm 90% sure this is a real mullard. And if it isn't, it should be. And the moral of the story is always look closely at your tubes. These three came in a huge lot of 12AU7s that I bought. They got put aside in the sort for further investigation. And this, if you don't have one of these little guys, a dollar store one will work just fine. You need one of these things. There's often details on these tubes, particularly etched codes, that'll be so faint that without a magnifying glass and a bright light, you might not even know that they're there. So let's take a quick look at a current production 12AU7. Electro Harmonix, what they call a 12AU7 EH. Electro Harmonix makes good, solid, reliable tubes. I've never had one fail in service. So how does this compare to vintage versions? The bass was okay, mid-range was okay, but maybe a little thin, especially when you compare it to the Sylvania Jan 6189 or the 5814. Top end was present, but lacked some of that special sparkle but this was a low noise tube and very low microphonics and that may just explain the lack of top end sparkle. It was a nice dynamic tube, it's reliable and it's affordable. And last but not least is the truly amazing Philips Mini Watt E80CC with gold pins. First introduced in 1957 and made in Holland at the Virland plant, this is a much loved and hunted close equivalent to the 12A7. I've only ever seen Philips, Amperex, Tungsram, and Valvo tubes. And these will be the subject of a future tube lab. Okay. And since we're talking about the E80CC, I want to share a tragic story. In fact, with this very tube. While filming a Tube Lab episode, I was using these E80CCs as props, and I dropped one. It missed the standing rubber mat that I use at my tube bench by this much, and bounced off the floor. Now, nine times out of ten, you can drop a miniature tube and no harm will happen. So I wasn't too worried when I put the preamp back into the system and plugged the mini watts back in. And you guessed it, a hundred dollars lost to, due to a fumble. So the moral of the story is don't drop your tubes. I've got a nice selection of E80CCs coming in from Europe, so the store will be restocked soon. And a warning, these are some of the most expensive E12 AU7 variants out there. Well, that was fun. Remember to su subscribe so you don't miss a Friday episode of Tube Lab. And if you stayed this long, how about some discount, discount codes? 
And remember, flat rate, $20 shipping on all orders, and shipping is free if you spend $150. And this is Jim at Valves and More, signing off. Cheers, everyone.